Hi everyone, I want to give you a quick update and the first look at the Season 23 meta. I got a lot of questions about what is going to be the best, are we going to replace the rat runs, how about the firebirds and all these kind of things. And I hope that here I can maybe give you a bit of a first impression. Keep in mind this is still pre-patch, so we don't know the final patch notes. I expect a nerf to firebirds, I expect it will still be the best build and for now the numbers that I have here are pre-nerf. So if they nerf firebirds anywhere between 5 to 8 tiers it will remain by far the best build for solo, for foreman speeds, for RGKing, for trash killing in foreman, everything. And if they nerf it by more than that, so if they cut the damage by, I don't know, more than let's say 70%, then we will have a few more options. So this is the first disclaimer here. There's also the Rafma Bone Spirit and the Rafma Army of the Dead that could come back. They were extremely good during the PTR and they were completely gutted. And I expect some quite significant buffs to both those builds. Right now, Rafma Bone Spirit is actually pretty good. But there is also the caveat that it's relying on permanent invincibility with the Crimson and Land of the Dead Invigoration combo. And this might or might not get fixed before the patch goes live or when the patch goes live. So it's all a little bit a question mark and we'll have to wait for the final patch notes. But for now, this is what we have. Most of the other things most likely will not change. I expect no changes anymore to Witch Doctor, to God the Age, and definitely not to anything that was left untouched from the patch to begin with. So I also don't expect any follower changes anymore. Perhaps they will fix the broken homing pads interaction, but it wouldn't really change much of the like overall balance between the builds. So let's get into it. I spent a lot of time updating all my DP planners already for Season 23. So I want to highlight this here maybe quickly. This is my DP planner and uh, DP links channel. We have, we have the Helix gift setups, we have the follower setups that you can uh, look at for the future if you want to make your own builds. You have like a basic, here for example, T60 enchantress, GR enchantress, etc. that we made together with the Maxwell guys. Here are the three new builds, Rafma, Bone Spirit, Rafmi, Army of the Dead and Firebirds. Then we have the solo leaderboard potential for every single build, for every single leaderboard. So I put this here just to give um, kind of like a bit of an idea of how strong the builds are. So I try to scale this to 2.5k Paragon with 500 keys used and assuming perfect gameplay. So obviously this is for very experienced players and this kind of gives you maybe like a goal to work towards for your own pushes just to give like a little bit of an idea of what he could do. Further up here, we, I have the meta for solo XP and also foreman XP and two, three foreman push. Here's also some other useful stuff. For example, the cursed chest locations. If you want to level on season start, I put them here. And here are all the builds. So I spent, I don't know, around 20 hours now updating all of them. So we have, I don't know, 50, 60 builds here or something. And these are almost all the builds in the game. There are some missing for the Barbarian right now, there are some missing for the Crusader right now. So, and also like the Witch Doctor has like a few. So there's like a handful or so that I still want to make to have at least one for each of the set leaderboards. So I want to have the best setup here for everything. And uh, this is just like a nice resource for you to quickly get the planner if you're already familiar with the build and you need to look at, you know, what you want to use or what is going to be the way to build the, the character then you can find them here. I also want to highlight our max roll site, if in case you haven't seen it yet. So here, this is a season 22 tier list right now. In maybe two weeks or so, when the season has over, we're gonna update this completely to season 23. And all of these are actual build guides. And all of these will also be updated to season 23 version with the new follower revamp, dropping out the fourth cube slot and all this kind of stuff and you will have a perfect overview over everything. So my little t Discord overview here is quite basic and uh, not 100% accurate I'd say. So some of these might be like one tier off or so of you know what the actual potential is. But uh, it's kind of hard to scale sometimes and so, uh, for some builds there's not a lot of data really. And some builds I also haven't played myself yet. That especially applies to some of the bar builds and some of the witch doctor builds. 
And other than that, I have played most of these builds myself and I think I have a pretty good estimation here. As I said, like plus minus one tier, I guess, would probably be the, the accurate range. I also want to highlight that we have a much more extensive tier list here on Maxwell as well. So not only do we have the solo tier list, which I try to mimic here a little bit, and we have the key tier list, for example, we have the bounty tier list, we have the solo XP. So this is like a bit more um, extensive, but essentially similar. Again, all of these will also be updated once the season rolls over and we can release all the season 23 versions. So now let's look at the meta actually. First of all, for the season start. So we have the Hatrix Gifts here and they are actually out of rotation and we get Waste, Roland, UE, Raymond, Rafma, Helltooth, Tarasha. So there are two that really shine here, which is the Waste from the Barb and the Unhold Essence from the Demon Hunter. I'd argue Demon Hunter has the best start this time around because you can transition into UE and then straight to God and you have you know, one of the top tier builds for pretty much everything. Uh, Waste is a bit more casual friendly, so that might be something more for the beginners because well, it's whirlwind, you just whirl around, kill everything, it's very easy. And it's just a tiny bit behind the Demon Hunter here in those cases. All the other classes are not really that great as a starter, but they kind of work. The worst one is the Raymond here. Raymond is extremely squishy at the start. So if you're farming T16 without gold wrap, then you're gonna have a lot of trouble. And even there, you might not even have the damage so easily early on. Tarasha, also not really great. Uh, Helltooth is kind of in the middle. Rafma is kind of in the middle. Roland as well, I'd say. So these builds are okay because you can just like sweep around with Roland. Rafma is fine, I'd say, with Bone Spirit or with Army of the Dead. And as I said, I expect some boss to this anyway. And Helltooth has zombie bears, which is also fairly good. Now for the solo XP meta, so you want to transition to Frenzy or Whirlwind as a Barb. You want Vela or Fawn's Bomb as a Crusader. You want God the Age as the Demon Hunter. You want POJ Tempest Rush as a Monk. You want Bone Spear or Bone Spirit with Vathma as a Necro. You want Spirit Barrage as the Witch Doctor. And you want Firebirds as a Wizard. So Firebirds is most likely going to get nerfed quite heavily, but even if they nerf it by 10 tiers, it's gonna remain basically the best in the game. So the nerf potential here is very large and I expect them to want to keep this kind of at the top and maybe a bit above the rest, at least for this season. And we would still run Firebirds essentially. So Wizard has some other pretty decent builds, for example, Typhoon Hydra or the Frozen Orb. They are also very nice for farming but they are definitely 10 tiers behind the Firebirds right now. So we'll see where the balance ends up exactly, but Firebirds is the way to go for pretty much everything right now. And as I said, if they don't nerf it by, let's say more than eight tiers, it will remain that way. The four man meta, there is a replacement for rat runs this time, and it is the bird runs. So it's two times the reverse Archon Firebird. I've already made a video about this. It's very cool, very fun and we were blasting for like 135s with this quite easily. And even without any Paragons, it's gonna start somewhere at 125 and then go all the way to 140 in around three minute runs if you play this properly. You have the Z Barb and the ZDH here to go with this and super cool meta. I can't wait to play this. And even if the nerfs a bit, it's most likely still gonna beat the rats because it goes so many tiers higher, even though the runs are a bit slower. So if you say like average three minutes versus yeah, average maybe 145 on rat runs, you have much faster runs uh, on rats, but they are much lower tiers. And even with like a, let's say 10 tier nerf, these would probably even out roughly, at least in terms of XP per hour. Obviously you get less loot here. Obviously you get less gem ups, but overall I would think that most people would actually prefer the, the bird runs here because it's just so much fun and something new. Everyone is hyped for Firebird, I imagine, and so am I, so I can't wait for this. The other XP meta is the red runs or the bat runs. So you can have the one bone spear instead of the second red. Otherwise, Z Barb, Z Neck for the globes. This is probably known to most people. I don't mean to need to say much. It's gonna drop down by like eight tiers or so from the season bonus from the fourth cube dropping out. So we just go to like, you know, starting at 105 and then high end going up, up to 120. So most people will probably run something like 110 to 115 here. And for the bird runs, that will probably be something like yeah, 130 to 135, what most people go for. 
two and three and push it's gonna be firebird with a support and then another support so nothing special firebird is just insane right now in case of a heavy nerf maybe we'll go to one support and then firebird plus boss killer setup or so we'll see but for now i will just leave this here uh, four man trash killers again firebird is ruining everything in case of a big nerf to firebirds there is actually quite some competition so there is heaven's fury with novel set and area damage so you skip the shield of fury and you just blast stuff so that is actually quite interesting crusader going from the rift guardian killer to a trash killer bone spear still extremely strong grim scythe is kind of back on the menu but very hard to do so this would be maybe something for like a high tier push but not necessarily for farming because it's very hard to play around Grim's life. And Spear Barrage. So even with the nerf to Witch Doctor, it actually loses less than the Bone Spear. So you can have around a 5 tier nerf and around 2 tier loss from the 4th cube on the Witch Doctor. And you have around 8 tier loss and no nerf on the Bone Spear. So Bone Spear loses 8, Spear Barrage 7. And right now in Season 22, those two builds are actually very close for 4 man trash killing. The main reason why we don't use the Spear Barrage is that we overkill 150s so hard with Bone Spear right now that you don't need the Spear Barrage. But theoretically, Spear Barrage is very good at killing elites because you can just blow them up in one pop when you have enough damage. While the Bone Spear actually can't do that. You just like mow it down and right now you simply have that damage on the high end to, to blast elites, no problem. But with an 8 tier loss in damage, you're not gonna have that damage anymore. So in case of a big firebird nerf, it will be quite exciting to see what people actually go push with. Right now my money is on firebird and then maybe the heaven's fury would be the second, but these other options are also all fairly strong here. The same goes for the rift guardian killers. So in case the firebird is not nerfed heavily, we would go with uh, probably one of those three and you know pending certain buffs maybe to Rafma and maybe LOD bone spirit in case they touch the items and not the set. We actually have a bit of variety here and all of these builds can kill the boss with like a high-end setup in one to two minutes on 150 and obviously much faster on lower tiers so there's that. The supports will remain unchanged for high foreman so it's going to be Zbar first and then ZDH second and this is basically the setup for everything here. So you would combine those two with, you know, one of the trash killers and one of the rift guardian killers. And maybe there would be a really strong firebird build that would go for a triple support setup. And then there would be probably the Z-Neck. Theoretically, Z-Monk is still an option, but Z-Neck should probably be winning out here. So we'll see exactly what happens when the patch goes live. Now for the solo leader boards. So we have six set-based leaderboards for every single class now and the overall leaderboard. So there's seven leaderboards and I have the best setup for every single one of those leaderboards here. In some cases, the overall leaderboard will actually have a bit of competition between different builds. So especially Demon Hunter and Witch Doctor are fairly balanced. Monk also kind of, but it's basically just four times the same build, which is Tempest Rush. And the other classes usually have like one or maybe two builds that really shine above everything else. Some of these builds got quite heavy buffs from the follower changes because suddenly they have Nemesis and Flavor of Time, which they didn't have before. So typically just adding a Flavor of Time to any build will correspond to maybe something like a three tier buff or so. If you fish enough and get a Condit somewhere and you kill like, you know, seven elite packs or something. So that alone will basically carry some builds up a little bit and also some builds that previously had flavor of time can now wear the squirt's necklace and actually use it quite successfully so this especially applies to some necro builds that are more ranged this also applies to a lot of demon hunter builds because you're ranged like multi-shot gold the age with fortress Ballister. you also have all these tempest rush builds that can make use of squirts to some degree at least so usually you can press serenity and get like two free squirt stacks or so which is not such a heavy buff but it's still like one and a half tiers two tiers almost in some cases you might get a shield pylon and even though you can't really protect your squirts on many builds you just get a lot of value doing that shield pylon because you straight up deal double damage pretty much so there are some things like this and also some builds really benefit from the follower buffs so for example all the wizard reverse archon builds benefit a lot from this change because they're extremely cooldown dependent and now you have 10% cooldown from your enchantress 
you can actually remove Gogok from those builds and get another DPS gem. So that is rather big and you know gives you another one, two, three tiers or so on those builds. You also have some of those extremely cool and hungry builds on a Necromancer where you want to have permanent land of the dead, for example, for the invincibility combo with Crimson. And this is much easier now because of the extra cooldown. You can actually make Crusader builds now that have essentially no gap in the Akarat's Champion. So that helps a lot with survivability and consistency. Also, certain builds just benefit a lot from the Scoundrel. So Scoundrel has this 100% crit effect with the Knight's Whale that uh, is like a 10. And if you have a build that can manipulate monster position through, for example, Cyclone Strike or maybe through the Crusader Horse and these kind of things, you can drag or pull enemies into that 100% crit cloud and deal a lot more damage. And in certain builds, that actually gives you something like a 80% damage boost during that uptime. And if you combine that with like a big nuke, maybe like a Tempest Rush explosion or something like that, you can do insane damage. So the follower changes are already included in those estimates here, but they might seem a bit high, but this is mostly because, well, you lose the fourth cube, but you gain the follower. And in most cases, you actually gain a bigger benefit from the follower than you lose from having the fourth cube drop out. Some builds go lower, especially those builds that lost like a really big multiplier, like the Death Wish or like the Shenlongs or maybe like the Norvalds on the Crusader and also the Redina Shadow Hook on Necromancer. So those builds will generally go a bit lower than before, but they will be probably not more than five tiers behind what they were doing in Season 22. I'm not going to read out every single set with the numbers now. You can see it for yourself or you can you know, go check it out for yourself either here or on Max Roll. But I just want to highlight the best builds quickly for pushing. So for the Barb, it will be and remains Whirlwind. Frenzy is like a close second. And Leap Quake is also a little bit behind that. The other builds are yeah, generally quite far away. Then we have Crusader with Akans, Thorns Bomb and Heaven's Fury. Heaven's Fury has two builds, which is first of all the Novart's Fervor and also the Ivory Tower. And both of these become much better at higher Paragon. So on lower Paragon, it might be better to go with this because you don't rely on uh, toughness so much. And with higher Paragon, you can make more and more offensive choices that will most likely have the Heaven's Fury win here. On Demon Hunter, it's God the Age and Natalia Rapid Fire. So the thing with Natalia Rapid Fire is it will most likely take the rank one at the end of the season in the overall leaderboard, but it's only really worth playing this or kind of doable at like at least 5k Paragon because this is an extremely squishy build. You have to face tank stuff, you have to stand in the middle and this is basically no way to play this effectively without giving up a lot of damage if you want to do this on the lower end. So Rapid Fire is very good now because the God potential got nerfed quite a bit. While God is almost unchanged or even buffed in farming, it is actually much lower in pushing now because missile dampening is out because the AOE scaling is much lower now. So the potential here is much less. But on the other hand, it's also much more consistent. So you can kill bosses without stricken. You can, you know, not fish for like 8,000 keys like some people do to clear 150. And it's actually much more consistent, much more fun to push and to farm with, I imagine. But generally, Demanta is the most balanced class. All these builds are just like five tiers apart. So potentially we might see every single one of those builds on the front page on the overall leaderboard in case some of the really high paragon guys decide to push in every single one of them. So we'll see. For the Monk, it's mostly Tempest Rush everywhere. So we have four leaderboards that have that. And that's kind of a sad story. So it's going to be some Voku Tempest Rush and the LOD Tempest Rush that I've already made the guide for, the Shimizu, that will take the crown here. And then slightly behind you have Justice and you have Inner Tempest Rush. And then you also have Raymond Generator and the Exploding Palm. So they are a bit behind. Yeah, overall Tempest Rush everywhere. Yeah, there's not really much to say here. I just hope that Blizzard will fix this for the future and maybe give some Voku an actual purpose and maybe give Inner an actual purpose. Necromancer's best build will remain Bone Spear, which is extremely strong. And a lot of people have a lot of experience with this now. So this will probably be one of the most pushed builds again, I imagine, especially if red runs are a thing. But there's also some other options. So Rathma is not that terrible right now, but again, 
it remains to be seen if they're gonna kill the land of the dead in migration combo and if they're gonna buff the set so both these kind of put a question mark here realistically i would imagine that we're also gonna see army of the dead again so there might be some kind of like 140 ish army of the dead or burn spirit build here and also on lod we have corpse explosion and grim scythe uh, especially grim scythe is very fishy so that will be quite difficult but it also got uh, a little bit of like a boost here because of the bone spirit changes. For Witch Doctor, the best build will remain Mundunugu. So even post nerf, it will take the crown here. And you can see that Witch Doctor overall is much more balanced now. So even though they got nerfed, uh, I think for the overall balance between Witch Doctor builds, this is actually pretty good. They just need to buff some stuff like this maybe. And otherwise we have the darts, which is not really far behind the Mundunugu now. And for the wizard, we have the Firebirds here. So this is by far the best build in the game right now. And even if they nerf it heavily, it will remain probably a top three build for solo pushing. Uh, maybe it will fall behind the Bone Spear in case of a heavy nerf. Maybe it will fall behind the Crusader, but that's about it. And the second best here is Twisters. So this is a reverse Archon Twister, which is quite strong, which again, got a pretty nice buff from the follower changes, as I mentioned. But that's about it for the wizard class. So it has a lot of other builds. You can play like Frozen Orb, you can play Hydra, but everything is kind of yeah, in like mid-tier range. But it's gonna be mostly Firebirds, I imagine. And that's about it for this video. So I try to give my best input here and my best estimates for what all these builds can do. This was mostly focused on GRs. So obviously there is no T16 tier list here or bounties or something like that. But most of that remains unchanged. Some builds get a bit of a bonus especially for solo t16 farming now because you previously didn't have sage or canes in lod builds and for example we have monk lod by the flight which is like the absolute king in t16 which now also gets canes and sage so that is going to be extremely ridiculous uh, there are some things like that but overall t16 is just going to be yeah, easier more smooth and you don't really have to worry about anything and many builds will very easily work and perform well and again, with bounties and groups, you have LOD, Wave of Light, you have UE, Demon Hunter, and then you have God, the Age, which are kind of like the kings of the, of the bounties. And you have, you know, some other builds that also perform well on the other classes, such as Whirlwind Barb, or Fist of the Heavens Crusader, or Hydra Wizard, the Mundunigo Witch Doctor, and yeah, probably the Rat Necro. So this is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed my overview here. I will probably make an update once we have the final patch notes i'll probably not go over everything again because most of it will remain unchanged i'll mostly be talking about what actually changes in that update so it will be a much shorter video and the rest will just be as it is right now so hope you liked my video and i'll see you guys next time